ended up getting her. Right. I wanted them to see you, and right. like I didn't want them yeah. to see your back half. So and as a speaker nice. myself, I didn't okay. want them to be like, oh, right, and do one of these. Like, so we had the stage one one way, and so we moved it in the front, so now everybody can hear you. Okay. And then we're gonna have a zoom. Um, so you're gonna be on film, right. like you asked for. So that'll be good. Okay, cool. I mean, they're all super excited. Yeah. Drew, Drew, people here that came from afar. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. People awesome. were telling me they were coming from all over. Stuff, yeah. So. so, and that's the reason why I did Murphy's World because I wanted to open it to Chattanooga, which is only closer on this side of town. Okay. Definitely. Okay. That's okay. so. great. Wow. There's a few people here. How you guys doing? Good to see you. Great to be back in Tennessee. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, I want to thank Carrie Ann for putting this on. If you guys could give her a big round of applause. And also my man, Dennis Steven. Uh, he's, uh, he's had my back from day one up here in Nashville. My team lead is also a, a Zero to Diamond certified coach. Um, if you guys know Dennis, give him a round of applause really quickly. And also my wife, where are you? There she is. Thank you so much for marrying me and giving us our beautiful daughter, Whitley. All right, here we go, guys. You guys ready for this? Now, first question. Have you guys ever been to grilled cheesery? We stayed in Franklin. We're staying in Franklin, went to the grilled cheesery. I didn't know that was a thing, but it's a thing thing. <laughs> so every time I say something today that makes sense, I want you guys to say, grilled cheesery. <laughs> Let's try it one time. Does that make sense? Grilled okay. How many of you guys are already following me online? Okay, good. If you're not following me online, What's up? <laughs> what is the deal? I'm Ricky. I've been a real estate agent since 2002. Okay, for the last five years, I've been on a mission to increase the success rate among real estate agents. So I'm working the industry from the ground up, from the very bottom level, which does what? It actually translates into brokerages staying in business as well have so many brokers reach out to me and tell me thank you so much for keeping my, my agents going that keeps my brokerage going. You see, a lot of people think that what I'm doing is just for new agents or just for struggling agents. It's not true. It's translating through the entire industry all the way to the top. Now, how am I doing this? What am I doing, right? Number one is sharing all the philosophies that I've learned over the years. Okay, and everything that I've done to, to create success in my business with as many agents as I can for absolutely free. That's number one. Now, in doing that, what happens? I can reach the masses. A long time ago when I started coaching, I would have 300 agents sign up for a webinar, 100 would show up, and one or two would sign up for my paid program. 300 agents needed help. I wanted to help all 300, but I had a paywall. You can only see my dark, deepest secrets if you pay me. That didn't sit right with me. And I couldn't come to speeches like this and tell you anything I want to tell you because they're paying and they're going to get mad if I say all the secrets. I want to just tell everybody everything, right? Now, we've had about 50,000 agents globally, most in the US, I would think, go through the Zero to Diamond program. We did a survey, okay, seven out of 10 say they get more listings and close more deals. 87% have better time management. Now right there, that tells me that, that the program is helping agents sell more properties in less time. And they're able to actually have a quality of life and spend more time with their families and do the things that they want to do. 75% say they read more than they did before the program. That's massive. But the one that really hit me was 98.8% of agents who go through Zero to Diamond say that they 
enjoy being a real estate agent more. Now that, that really hit home with me when I saw that statistic. Can I get a gr grilled cheesery? Okay, all right, y'all are, are listening. Now, to go a little deeper with this and what I want to do today, what my job is, I take my job very seriously, and that is to just help you increase your confidence level just a little bit. That's what we're going to do here today. On the way up here on the plane yesterday, I was uh, watching Howard Schultz, the founder of Starbucks, and he said something that hit me. He said, if you're in a room full of 100 people, you're in a room full of 100 people, and every single one of those 100 people have some level of self-doubt, some level of insecurity, some level of a lack of confidence. I don't care who you are. There's some level, some greater, some less. But you have some level. And my job today is to increase that, decrease the level of that lack of confidence, increase your level of confidence, okay? That's what I wanna to do today. Now, let me break this down just a little deeper. I wanna increase your confidence in three areas. Okay, I want to increase your level of confidence within the overall market itself, the outlook of the market. I want you to be super confident when you leave here that you're not worried about the market. The second thing I want to build your confidence in is your business and, and your ability to create a successful career and to have confidence within yourself. Because when you communicate with people, they can tell if you're confident or not in yourself. And this is the number one thing, this is the number one reason why you may lose a listing. A client doesn't pick you. There's other factors, but this is, I believe, the number one factor. They don't feel the confidence in you for whatever reason. You may feel confident, but you're not exuding that. You're not communicating that to your prospect. We gotta increase that just a little bit. Not only that, but your ability to create a successful short or long-term career. And the third thing I wanna build your confidence in is the actual future of the market, and the future of the industry, the real estate industry overall. Okay? You guys ready for this? Grilled cheesery! Now, 2022, gloom and doom, right? As far as the media is concerned, there's gurus saying it's going to be the worst case scenarios, 2008 all over again. Hopefully by now you guys realize that's not going to happen. It's probably a little more scary when interest rates did jump 2%. You still have a lot of negativity in, in the media, and that's kind of the media's, I mean, that's kind of what they do, right? So, the first thing I want you guys to realize is, is it's only human nature to take this negative media and allow it to dictate our thoughts, our emotions, our actions, our execution, and ultimately our results. It's just human nature. It's called negativity biased, which means that if you have a positive situation and you have a negative experience, and they're both equal, you're going to put way more weight on that negative experience. It's just human nature. So the first thing we need to do is to realize this and, and grab a hold of it and not allow those things to happen. Not to allow these headlines and, and trigger words to affect our emotions and how we feel about the market. When we put together a plan, we should be able to visualize that plan getting us where we want to go over the next five years, 10 years, regardless of the market. All we have to do is look at history. Now, one thing that I'm doing right now to combat this is I started writing blogs again. And what I'm doing is, is I'm reversing the stats. For example, NAR came out with one of their reports and said transactions were down 14.2% okay, in, in, in June, I believe it was. 14.2%. So I write an article and, I, and the headline is, is transactions hit 85.8% in 2022. Thanks, Mom.
And then I write an article with data. And what I want to do is I want to reverse these negative trigger words and headlines. So that's one thing that I'm doing right now. And I'm going to go harder there to try to push the positive side of the data. Because there's, a, there's an incredibly positive story here on the, on the, in, within data, <laughs> within the industry. Incredibly positive side. Stop looking at the negative side. When you look at it, pay attention to it so that you know how to communicate with your clients so you can best educate your clients so they can make the best decision possible. Never try to predict to your clients, but use, use the, the data right, to try to educate them. All right, it's kind of like a seller. Right now we have so much data to educate them. Right? Let's just talk about here in Nashville, the Nashville you know, greater area, um, days on the market. Right now, the average is, I looked, it was 15 days, average on the market. The, the, uh, an all-time low, an all-time low, even lower than last year in the crazy market. Do you guys, did you guys know this? That we're lower days on the market, average days on the market than we were last year? Now, the days on the market, that data does not take into consideration the properties that aren't selling because they're overpriced and sitting on the market for forever. It's not taking into consideration the expired listings and the ones that aren't selling. So you see inventory rising because sellers are in a denial that the market has shifted. Hello? All right. But the properties that are priced correctly are selling within two weeks on average. You have to educate your sellers on this data. If you, if you understand this when you're talking to your, your client about listing a property, you can very confidently, confidently tell them that if this property isn't getting much action, we don't get any offers within the first 30 days, something's wrong because we're at all time lows on days on the market with all time high prices. Prices, properties are selling for the highest dollar ever in the shortest amount of time ever right now. This is the strongest market we've ever been in right this second. Do you guys understand that? Grilled cheesery. Real cheesery. <laughs> interest rates. Okay. Have you guys actually looked at what happened when interest rates reached almost 20% back in the late 70s, early 80s? Did you look at prices? Did you see prices dip? No. Prices continued to go up during that time. Was there a couple of leveling moments? Sure. Never went down. Were there interest rate spikes up and down in the 80s, in the 90s? Yeah. Did prices ever go down? No. The only time prices went down was in 2008 because you have the mortgage amount down, of course. I'm not going to sit here and educate you on that. But what I will educate you on is the fact that closings never stopped. One of my favorite quotes, uh, quotes by sire Richard Carruth who said, closings will happen every day for the rest of your life, regardless of market conditions. Now, do you guys believe that? Listen, who would say 2008 is probably worst case scenario, doomsday, it's worse, as bad as it can get? No, you think it can get worse? Almost nobody raised their hand. So are you telling me that you think it can get, do you think that it's a possibility it can get worse than 2008 in terms of the real estate market? I'm going to ask again. <laughs> if it could get worse in 2008, okay, we can have a debate. But do you guys honestly think that it could get worse? Isn't that a doomsday scenario? Let's just assume that it is for just a second. Just humor me. In 2005, there were over 7 million transactions in the country. To my knowledge, that was an all-time high. 2008 was a little over 4 million transactions. That was the worst from, from, the, in the, from the 2000 on. That was the worst year. That was the biggest drop. It's increased every year since then. It's, it's always been higher than that. 
kind of did this a couple years, but it's always, it, the number of transactions in the country continued to increase from that point. That was the lowest point. So what I'm saying is, is that if it goes from 7 million transactions to 4 million, there's still 4 million transactions happening. That's a lot. Now, if you're selling property in 2005, and you're, you're selling during the time that there's 7 million transactions, and it drops to 4 million, okay, that's a little less than 50% drop, and your business drops 40%, okay, that hurts. I get it. But it didn't go to zero. And the punchline is so many agents during a time like that are going to be out of the business. What does that mean? More transactions per agent for the agents who stay in. I guarantee you, if you look at 2005 and you look at, I'm going to do the data on this. I'm going to have real data. When you, when you look at the, the, the 2005 and 2008, I guarantee you there was more transactions per agent because there were so fewer agents in 2008 than there was in 2005. I know agents that were crushing it in 2008. I was jealous as can be. Mad, angry. How are you doing this? Tell me the secrets. And they told me the same stuff they told me when I got started. Postcards, phone, phone calls, and emails. Nothing changed. All this stuff started to add up for me. If you look at canceled contracts right now, another metric that's interesting. The media's making a big deal about that. It shot up. Home builders are seeing it. Even existing homes are seeing it. Deer Horton said they had 24% canceled contracts in the second quarter. Last year, second quarter, it was 16%. Big jump. But you know what's cool about that, that stat and what made me open my eyes because it's the first time I really looked at canceled contracts? I thought, are you telling me that 16% of people were canceling contracts last year? during that crazy 15 offer per listing uh, market? I was like, wow, that was interesting. If you look at the overall market, it jumped up to 17% during the pandemic. Now that's pretty bad. No human to human contact, no, the economy is shut down, and you had 17% was all that was canceled during that time. Now, I would say that that's probably as bad as it can get. Can you guys agree with that? Okay, finally. 17% cancel contracts. Okay, now last year, the low, which was an all-time low of 10% cancel contracts. During 20 offers per listing, you know, buyers uh, purchasing houses they didn't even really like, paying 100,000 more because they couldn't find anything else. You still had 10% of people backing out of deals during that time. But, but let's dig a little deeper. Right now, we're at 15%. Last month, it jumped up to 15% since this interest rate thing and all this, that, and the other, which lines up with 2019, which is around 14%. What does this tell us? We're, 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 2019 was a very normal market to me, in my opinion. It was a very normal market. We are entering into a very normal market. And, th and this is, again, you got the highest prices ever, which have leveled out, selling faster than ever before since they started recording days on the market. Can I get a hallelujah? Can I get an amen? <laughs> Can I get a grilled cheese or read? Pizza melt with pepperoni and crusted parmesan, peppuccini. Ooh. I looked here in the Nashville greater area. Prices have leveled off. Um, in May, where you guys were at a 26% 20, increase from last May. Right now, we're at 18%. It's dropped, according to Redfin, which means leveled out. It's really, when you look at the Redfin chart, it, it kind of goes here, and then it kind of has a little dip, then it goes like that. It's leveled out. 460 uh, median price, and it's like 450, something like that. And it's, and, it's, and it's leveling. This is a good thing. And we're still selling them faster than ever. If you look at the country overall, it's pretty similar. 16% was the peak. 
of where we were over, now prices are kind of leveling out and even dropping. They're dropping in several markets. Not a whole lot, just a little bit, but it's the leveling. Now we're looking at 9% year over year. Where are we gonna end up? Will it, keep, will it continue to drop just a little bit more? Yeah, probably. NAR's calling for 4% uh, appreciation this year, something like that. It looks like that might happen. Next year, about the same thing. If you listen to some people, gloom and doom, but if you look at the data, it tells us a really incredible story. Now, I could go on and on and on and on about the market and how it's great and it's the greatest ever and, you know, we're, we're going to be fine and all that, but I think you guys get the point, right? Now, if you guys feel like your confidence level has increased just a tad about the market itself, let me get a really loud grilled cheese zuri. Yes. Place is good. How many, how many people have been there? Oh, yeah. And if you hadn't, what's up? Your business. All right, let's dig in here. Build your confidence just a tad. I just want to increase it just a, just a smidge because that can make the difference and create a, a massive breakthrough in your business. How many people here, right, think about this question, and keep your hand raised if you do raise your hand. How many people here know what to do? You know what to do. Think about it. Okay, keep them up. Let's get high, let's get high. I wanna see you. Now keep them up, keep them up if you know what to do, but you're not doing it. <laughs> Y'all are lying, lying, lying. Do we have 400 people here? I thought this place held 400 people. It looks like 400 people. How many people do you think is here? Hmm? 398. Now, I'm trying to illustrate a point here, guys. The ABCs, the one, two, threes, how to build your real estate business is not super difficult. Golden nuggets are everywhere. Just Google stuff. Go talk to agents that are succeeding. It's everywhere. The problem is you haven't figured out exactly what systems work best for you to build your business that you can fully commit to and scale. Now, what I want you to think about is, well, let, let's do this. How many new agents do we have? All right, listen, first thing for you guys is, is never raise your hand or admit, to, don't tell nobody you're a new agent, okay? <laughs> how, many, how many agents do we have that aren't new You've kind of broken through. You can tell I'm, I'm not going to this is going to be a career. It's going great. You've got some momentum going, but you want to take it to the next level. How many team leaders? How many broker owners? Give it up for the broker owners. How many of you are retired? <laughs> that was a trick question, by the way. No real estate agent retires. And in all seriousness, that's kind of the problem, right? See, most real estate agents, they're just grinding away. They're not really thinking about five years out. They're just trying to get to that next deal and that next sale. They're just trying to hit their 2022 goals. They're not thinking big picture. They're not thinking five years out where you could really be. And that's what I wanna help you guys with today. I want you guys to really think about this. Because if, you if you're not thinking about where you wanna be in five years, if you don't have a daily routine and a, and, a, and a schedule and systems in place that you can visualize getting you where you wanna be in five years, then you need to sit down, quit everything you're doing and recalibrate what you're doing to where you can visualize. That way when you wake up in the morning, you know what you're doing today is gonna to get you where you wanna to be to that dream life in five years. 
Let's do a quick exercise. Everybody close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Let it out. And I want you to think about your life, your business in five years in a perfect scenario that you hit all your goals, everything you want to accomplish is coming true, and you've got that perfect business, that perfect life. How much money are you making? Where do you go to church? What does your family look like? What are you driving? Where do you live? What do you do all day? Now open your eyes. What I want you to think about, I want you to think about that from time to time. But the punchline is, look at your schedule and your daily routine. Are you building a business for your five-year self? Or are you just trying to get to the next deal, the next deal, the next deal, the next deal? And if you are working deal to deal to deal, hopefully I can hit you with something of the day that makes you think about this and start to recalibrate your patterns behind calibrating the right routine. Because you can take this platform of real estate and build anything that you want to build. Now, a clear example. In 2017, that was the first year I hit a million dollars as a single agent. And that was the year I quit prospecting. But I hit a million dollars every year since then. I had the five-year plan in mind as I was prospecting. See, a lot of people don't think about this. See, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Regardless of how you get your leads, right? It's all about accumulating relationships, right? Accumulating relationships and how do we, how do we create a scenario where no one ever forgets who we are once we give them that great first impression? That's what it's all about. But some people, they just prospect that they die. One of, my, one of my mentors, who I deeply, deeply respect and love and admire, his name is Bob. And he was in business for 40 years. He moved from Birmingham to, to Gulf Shores, Orange Beach. And uh, when I moved to Remax, he had his own office, big, huge office downstairs. I would go in and talk to him from time to time. So much wisdom about how to communicate and, and the business and pricing. And I learned so much from him. And we were just really close because he admired me as well. He could tell I was on the come up. You know, I was making like 200000 a year or something. And, but he saw the hustle. So we connected because I think, I think I reminded him, a younger version of himself. So one day we get the call, Bob's going to die. And we're like, man, you know, this is sad. You know, we're not going to see Bob anymore. The very next day, I walk into the office, and where's Bob? He's in his office calling expires and for sale by owners. And he's got three months to live. And that's how he built his entire business, calling expires and for sale by owners. So here he is. He's, he's basically on his deathbed. He's calling expires and for sale by owners, and he's in his late 70s. The next day he was there calling expires. The next day he was there calling expires. Finally, I didn't say anything to him. Finally, I asked Patrick, my broker, what's the deal with Bob? He said, oh, he's, he's trying to, he's just working as hard as he can so he can save, so he can have as much money, he's making as much money as he can to leave his wife. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. I was like, that is not how I want to live my life. Can you imagine? prospecting till the day that you die. He prospected all the way till three days before he died. He was too weak to come to the office. He died three days later. Incredible, incredible man. But that's not how I wanted to live my life or build my business. You have to be a progressive thinker who executes. 
Progressive thinkers think about the future. They create a game plan around the future, what they really want out of life. But then guess what? The missing ingredient that most people don't have is, is they execute on that game plan and they stick to it until it happens. So my question to you is, are you a progressive thinker? Do you think about the future or only thinking about the next deal? When you're prospecting, I don't care how you get your leads. You can cold call them, you can warm call them, you can social media, you can for sale by owner, you can open house, you can network, you can door knock, you can do whatever you want to do. I don't care. But are you accumulating these relationships? Are you talking to these people? Are you figuring out what it is that you can do to help them? Because that's what it is at the end of the day. I want you to remember this, because normally I, I use the phrase relationships over transactions. But I want, you to, I want you to think about this one and keep this one with you. When you're, when you're, when you're prospecting, when you're talking to leads, when you're talking to clients, I want you to focus on the person, not the property. Focus on the person, not the property. So let me dig a little deeper there. When I'm calling an expired listing, I could care less about the expired listing. I'm not calling with a series of questions to try to figure out what I can do to get this guy to sign the listing agreement. What I'm doing is I'm using that property as an excuse to talk to them, to see if I can get to know them, to see what it is they're trying to do, to see what's going on in their life that's causing them to make this decision to possibly sell. Because once I have that data and I feel like I've created a connection, then I can put together a game plan to actually help them. Whereas I think most coaches and trainers, I mean, look at the script, look at the terminology, look at the verbiage. It's all geared towards trying to somehow magically get a contract signed. I don't care about that. I'm just trying to figure out if I can get to know you. I want to challenge myself every day, every, every conversation I have, and this is what I want you to do. When you talk to prospects, I want you to challenge yourself to see if, if you can get this person to open up to the point that they allow you to get to know them. Then magic happens, because once you, once you develop that skill of making people comfortable enough with you to open up and tell you what's going on in their life so that you can actually help them, that's something no, no market crash, no body can ever take from you. That's a skill that's gonna, that's gonna carry on, that's gonna follow you everywhere you go, through your real estate, career, into other industries, whatever you do in life. And the best way to make them feel comfortable with you is by being comfortable with them. And there we go. Right back to confidence. If you're not confident in yourself, in the market, in the outlook of the future of the industry, in your ability to create a successful career short and long term, they're going to feel that when you're talking to them. And that's the downfall of most of the agents in this room who are struggling right now. And you don't even know it. You're saying everything that the coach told you to say. You're doing everything that your broker told you to do. And it's just not happening. And you don't know why. People are mean, Ricky. <laughs> you don't understand up here in Nashville, people are just down rude. <laughs> Nothing like down there in them nice Gulf Shores people. No, most of my clients are from Nashville, New York, Atlanta, all over the place. I deal with all of them. Not only that, I've coached agents all over the country and world. Agents in South Africa, agents in Australia, agents in Canada, Brazil. People don't care about all that. Rudeness. They care. They, these, people just want to know that you care about them. If they have a wall up because of past experiences... Okay? And most people are, you know, not out to get them. I never think that. But maybe have the wrong intentions. They run across very few people have the, have the best of intentions, which is you. See, they don't know you. They don't know what your intentions are. 
But see, they're not going to get to know what your intentions are if you don't learn how to communicate properly. If you can't get them to open up and they just shut you down and you don't know how to break through that wall and show them who you are, they're never going to get a chance to understand what your intentions were. So that's the skill right there. Now, going back to I'm making the calls, nothing's happened. I'm saying what you say to say, nothing's happened. I'm posting on social media. I'm doing this. I'm doing the weekly email. I'm doing everything you tell me to do. It's just not happening. You know what that's called? Going through the motions. There, I was talking to one of my agents last month or so. He says, man, I'm, ha I'm, get I'm, I'm having a rough time. I said, talk to me. I've made 250,000 calls. I've sold two properties. I've been doing this for two years, whatever. I said, okay, talk to me. Tell me what's going on. So he's telling me all this stuff that he has going on. He says, I partnered with this other agent and we're doing your 28 day challenge. And you know, we're going through the motions of that. And then he kept going and kept telling me this story and I'm just sitting back listening. I'm absorbing everything he's saying. He gets through and I said, all right, cool man, listen. Did you just hear what you said to me? You just said the words that you're going through the motions. Those words came out of your mouth. Now, when you're talking to Ricky, I'm sure you're sugarcoating some things. Even with the sugarcoating, you still said out of your mouth that you're going through the motions. That's all I'm going to talk about to you today, good sir. Let's, now, let's break this down. And I said, bro, there's your problem right there. Because what he's doing is he's just trying to get dials. Oh, I made 1,000 calls and I made 2,000 calls and I made 500 calls. I talked to this many people. Da, 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 da. That doesn't matter. I would rather you make five calls and talk to three people for 30 minutes apiece than to tell me you made 100 calls and, and got a couple emails. I don't care about the number of dials. I care about the quality of the conversations. See, when you wake up in the morning, you better love what you do. And when I say love what you do, here's what you do. You talk to people, you better love that. People you don't know, better love that. You better love talking to people that you don't know to see what you can do to get to know them, what's going on with them in their life, what you can do to help them, what you can do to use your services as a real estate agent to help them through these big life changes that they have going on. You better love it. You better love, and I can get an amen on this, you better love talking to, talking, showing buyers for a week that, that, that ghost you. You better love that. You better love going to listing appointments and not getting picked as the agent. You better love that. You better love spending hours and hours on the phone or doing your social medias or whatever that you do and getting zero results for a little while. You better love that. But most importantly, you better love people. And it comes from a place of genuine curiosity. Write that down and really think about it. Genuine curiosity. See, when I'm prospecting, it all comes natural to me because I have this really deep sense of genuine curiosity about all of you right here. I wish I could sit down and talk to every single one of you because I look in your eyes and I think, man, what is going on inside that head? That's, that's, it's, it, 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 that's, what, that's how I am. That's how I'm built. When I'm talking to prospects, let's just, say, let's just throw a, just a, 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 a generic scenario that everybody's ran into and everybody's handled wrong earlier in their career, where a seller says, hey, you know, yeah, thanks for calling. Uh, you know, we're going to sell in three months. Call me then. Okay, I'll call you in three months. This is your number? Cool, I'll call you in three months. How many people here have done that? Maybe earlier in their career. Liars. You're going to so dumb. <laughs> Liars. Liars. In that scenario, you know, because agents ask me this all the time. Oh, the seller said they're going to sell in six months. What do I do now, Ricky? How do I follow up? Oh, uh, hey, do listen. I do not know why they want to sell in six months, right? So I have to break this all down for them. 
You tell me you want to sell in six months, that triggers that genuine curiosity immediately. Okay, cool. What's got you wanting to sell in six months? Tell me more about this situation. Are you just telling me what I want to hear so I can get off the phone? Or are you actually thinking about selling in six months? No, I'm just telling you what you want to hear to get you off this damn phone. <laughs> Goodbye. No, you really want to sell? Great. Cool. Tell me about this. Are you wanting to close in six months or you want to start the process in six months? Why are you looking to sell in six months? Your daughter's graduating from high school and going to college and you want to downgrade, you don't need the extra bedroom. The, this, this information, this data is so important and a lot of you guys are leaving it on the table. Why? Because you don't have a sense of genuine curiosity. This stuff just comes out. The, like, they say something and it triggers me and I'm like, oh, Tell me more. Why? What's going on? Oh, I can relate to that. My mother went through this. My friend went through that. I went to school there. Connections. Don't be so hard on yourself. Don't compare yourself to other agents. Do you. The best thing I can tell you guys about communication is, is to relax and stay calm because they're going to feel that walk into every situation not caring about what the outcome is i could care less if you want to sell that property today or not i just want to get to know you and see what's going on and through that i'm going to be this person's agent for life because they're going to feel that wow this agent's different they care about me they're not just trying to get me to sign a listing today they're not handling my objections. Objections are, is just rejection and objections. That's just your prospect telling you what they want to do. You don't have to combat objections. Listen to the objections. I don't care if you want to sell in three months. I'm not going to say, well, if I could get you this price, would you sell it sooner? I'm not going to do that. I want to learn more about the psychology, what's going on behind the scenes that caused them to make this decision. The reason why I sold so much property, honestly, because it finally dawned on me that I wasn't trying, I'm not in the business to sell real estate. I'm in the business to just help people do whatever it is they're trying to do. When I started to let go, of the transactions and just completely detached myself from the transactions itself and just went all in with just, how are you doing? What's going on? What can I do to help? That's when everything exploded. Does this help? A little louder. Throw cheese or ree! When you're going through the motions, guys, like that agent. Okay, he's like, I'm just going through the motions. I'm, you know, I'm making the calls and doing what you say you're going to do. And I sound really sad. Like I didn't go to Grilled Cheeser yesterday and I didn't have the pizza melt with the Parmesan crust and apparently a little peppuccinis on the And I just sound sad. He doesn't realize that he sounds sad. He doesn't realize it. He thinks that he sounds upbeat and happy. So understand when you're communicating with people, you don't even know it. You don't even know that you're not, you're, not, you're not sending the right message. You don't even realize it. Because there's a part of you that's going through the motions. Because Ricky said, it's, you're going to get rich if you do this. And you will do it if you love doing it. Grilled cheesery. <laughs> now we're starting to sound like a church. One more thing, guys. The future of the industry. Now, this is very interesting, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff going on in this space with real estate tech. Now, it hasn't taken us out and hasn't really affected our commission, you know, so it's kind of off our radar, if you will. Okay, let them do whatever they want to do. But let me tell you, there's companies working as hard as they can possibly work 
to take your job from you. And you know, what they've accomplished so far is really remarkable. They've made our lives 10 times easier in the process, and they've lost billions and billions and billions of dollars. So. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, pizza melt. Pepperoni, Parmesan crust, pepperoncinis. Make no mistake though, right? They want part of the real estate commission pool. Okay, you guys know how big that pool is? Does anybody know? It's 100 billion. Last year was over 100 billion dollars in real estate commissions. Now, this year it's gonna be less because less transactions, but prices are so high. We're still gonna be about 20 billion more than 2019, about 10 billion more than 2020. Even with less transactions because prices are so high. They want a piece of that pie, and they've been trying to figure it out for years. You got Redfin, lost billions. Bad reviews. Open Door lost billions. Zillow lost billions. But they got billions too in the bank. And they're going to be here a long, long time. And I think what's very interesting is that, especially with this new partnership between Zillow and Open Door, you guys I'm sure heard about that. Maybe, maybe not. But you know, last year Zillow said, no more iHome buying. Losing too much money. <laughs> Actually, it was quite funny because they blamed it on Zestimates, right? Like, our estimates suck, so we can't buy houses because we thought it was worth more money. It, it's the truth. That's what they said. We can't, we don't know how to price homes, so we suck. We can't buy them right, we can't sell them, we don't know what's going on. So they said, okay, come on in here, open door, which, you know, they used to compete to see who could lose the most capital <laughs> Venture capital. Right, let's just let's just combine and see if we can't just really screw this thing up. But it's very interesting, and I think it's a really big play for everybody, for, for those two. With Zillow and, and Open Door doing this, right? You can go on Zillow, you can click a button and get an Open Door offer. Okay, that's big for Open Door because now they have the eyeballs of everybody on Zillow, which is the largest traffic website for real estate. And for Zillow, what do they get out of this? Well, last year Open Door wrote about 2.1 million offers. They bought about 37, 38,000 houses, so they bought about they bought about 1.5% of the of the houses they made offers on, which tells you 99% of the people who got the offers thought they were silly. And so there's all these people on the table. So what happens? So, so Open Door creates a situation with Zillow to make more offers on more properties and hopefully buy more properties and lose more money. And Zillow gets the aftermath of the people who didn't accept the offers. And then what? They can give that to a Zillow Premier Flex agent for 30, 35% on the back end of those listings, of those seller leads. That's a big play. That's an interesting play. These guys are gonna keep moving around and juking and jiving, but what's, what's really interesting is that that play involves what? Agents. So you see, the, the pendulum swings, and when Zillow came on, on the scene, 87, 79% of, of, 76 percent of buyers were, were using agents, 76. Now we're at 87. Since Zillow came into the picture, it's, it's risen every year. Now we're at 87% of buyers are using agents, traditional real estate agents. It's at an all-time high. 90% of sellers, which is at an all-time high. More people, a bigger percentage of buyers and sellers right now, ever in history, are using traditional real estate agents right now as we speak. One of my theories behind this is that 
the faster technology gets and the better technology gets, the more fear that I'm seeing in the consumer. Because this, this is a transaction that, that some people only buy or sell houses, you know, what, three or four times in their life. Um, it, it's once in a blue moon that they're going to move, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. Um, this is a big, big, big deal for them. And the quicker that, that technology and these companies try to make the transaction, I think, I think the, the more the consumer's like, oh, they're not, you know, this is too quick of a decision here on such a big transaction. I don't know. I, I need somebody on my side. I need, I need representation. I need somebody that's looking out for my best interest, making sure that I'm making the best decision here, handling all the back end of, of the servicing the contract to close, so on and so forth. Plus, I go on to see reviews of these companies and think, oh, I don't, I don't know about this, but I find it very interesting. There's a lot going on in this space. Um, I feel like, what we, what there, well, there's a lot of things, right? There's a lot of brokerages that allow us as agents to actually offer these cash offers to clients. There's a bunch of brokerages that do this. And literally, you literally are your own iBuyer which is, I think, very interesting. I'm looking at this as a, as a big picture here, right? The agents can actually compete with the iBuyers out there. I mean, Mark Spain does this, right? Um, there's, the, there, uh, there's a lot of brokerages that offer this. Certified, get certified, to be in part of their iBuyer program, bam. You can compete. You're literally your own open door at that point, competing. Now they have an actual real agent as opposed to a corporation handling that transaction form. Anyway, I just find this very, very interesting, right? Commissions have, have been squeezed just a tad, but nothing like people were predicting back in 2010 when a lot of these guys came on the, on the scene, right? It's really incredible how resilient us agents have, have been. And it's, it's not us, it's the market. It's the consumers, it's their choice. They've spoken. They want an agent. And I find that very interesting. So here's to us for not only dominating the market, but continuing to dominate the market. Right? Grilled cheesery on three. One, two, three. Grilled cheesery. So we talked about building your confidence in the market itself, in your business, short and long term, and the future outlook of the industry, right? And I hope this has helped increase your confidence level just a little bit where you can go out there and feel more educated. You feel like you're, you're, you have a better sense of how you need to communicate with your clients, right? Stop focusing on the deal so much. Focus on what you can do to help people. All right, I love you guys so much. I'm gonna take a couple questions, thank you.
with Simber, and I thought it was just like a bruise, whatever. So I played on it, said I didn't want to miss my high school season, and, but it would just like pop out and go back in. I was like, I appreciate y'all's like, patience. Didn't tell anybody, and finally it popped out and wouldn't go back in. Like, I think he's just saying hello. Like, oh. It was so bad. But he's, uh, it's my understanding he's needing to be quick about it. Okay, cool. Yeah.
should have stopped you. Like, Thanks, bud. Thank Be good, brother. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> What's up, bud? Doing all right? You know me? Huh? You know me? Do I know you? Yeah. Oh, dude, I, I, I know you. I know your mom. I know your father. Thank I know you. your whole family. We talked before. You called me several times. You keep supporting and encouraging me. However, you know, everybody has moments in his life. I just retired and came back. I like your speech. But here's the point. But here's what? Here is the point. Okay. About the confidence. Yeah. I have a fully confidence and I have fully, I'm very confident in myself. However, this is how I feel. When, I, when you approach like different nationality, like yeah. I'm from Egypt, I'm yeah. not American. Yeah. If I approach American, I feel that the American want to work with American. Spanish right, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is a point is really, it's, you know, it's make me down. It yeah, yeah, me yeah, down. yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Right, right, right. So, so I don't want to eliminate myself. I don't want to, you know, put myself in a circle of yeah. my community or my people. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't know how to overcome this yeah. point. So, so the thing is, is that, that, that what you're doing is, is you're stereotyping every situation. And you're saying that Americans only want to work with Americans. Yeah, I feel But that. that's not true, right? There's a percentage of Americans that want to work with Americans, and there's a percentage that want to work with you, yeah. right? Same thing with me. When I talk to a client, there's a percentage they don't want to work with me, maybe not because of the nationality, maybe because of other reasons. So let's take nationality out of the equation for a second, right? There's a percentage of people that don't want to work with you for whatever reason, and there's a percentage who want to work with you, right? There's always going to be that for every single agent, right? What you have going for you is that the, that the nationality thing and the accent and everything else exactly. is a massive, massive, massive... Um, with the language barrier yeah, and all, the accent, of course, you can, you can hear it. Right, 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 right. All, all that is a huge advantage. How? Because you're looking at it, see, again, negativity biased. Yeah. You're, you're, you're thinking about this, this accent and you're thinking and it's weighing a lot more than the fact that a lot of people love the accent. Like that's, that's maybe. See, no, 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 not maybe, not maybe. But see, if you don't believe that, then they're going to hear that in your voice. See, this, this is a chicken and egg thing. If you don't believe 
that this is your superpower, that, you, that you're from Egypt and that you have this accent and you're not from America. If you don't believe that, then people aren't going to hear that in your voice and they're not going to do business with you, right? Not because your nationality, but because your confidence level. Because you think the nationality thing is, is an actual um, problem when it's actually a huge positive. So if you can flip your mind to realizing that, like, you want to work, you don't want to work with people who only want to work America. Do you want to work with an American who only want to work with, America, with Americans? Do you want to? I mean, no. Uh, I don't. I don't. I mean, if I get the opportunity and we're going to work together, this is business and business has no emotions. But if they only want to work with Americans. So no, because I'm going to be. Listen, rejected. listen, listen. I don't even, but outside of the rejection, I don't even want to work with somebody like that. Because the mindset, his mindset. Yeah, I don't want to work with somebody like that that's that close minded. Gotcha. That's not my people. But listen, man, there's always going to be percentage of people that don't want to do business with you, maybe because of lack of confidence, your accent, you didn't say the right things, you're too high pressure, they have another agent, they don't like you, they don't like the way you dress. There's going to be a percentage of people that don't do business with you for whatever reason, and there's going to be a percentage of people who love you and want to do business with you for the rest of your life. Always. You're holding yourself back from having enough conversations to find the people that want to do business with you because you're worried about the people who don't like you for whatever reason that doesn't matter. See what I'm saying? Dude, you need to own this. You know what I'm saying? Like you need to own it. You need to you need to like put it on a billboard. I'm from Egypt. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I feel that you came on the perfect time. To, okay, I start on 2020. I retired, then I came back. I sold like from 2020 till today like Five years. Tomorrow, one of my closest friends set me up an appointment with one of the VIP people. He's not from here, he just came to purchase a property. Yeah. I'm being preparing this for a week as far you know business dressing and uh, home. You're work. overthinking everything. So you just if everything. If you got in my shoes, what are you gonna do? Own it. Right? Own it. You know, like, just own it. Whatever happens, happens. You're going to go out there and do the best you can do to help people. Right? You care about people. How is That's you, it. If you, okay. If somebody you, doesn't want to do business with you. just said that, hey, don't say that you're a new Asian. How about if you It was a me? joke. Okay. It was a joke. Okay. How about if you ask me about, hey, how many deals you make? What is your volume? Be okay. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Okay. How many deals have I done? None. And that's why you want me. I hear that in your video. Yeah. Right. That's why you want me. You can turn every situation around to your benefit where you never lose. Even if the client walks away, you still won because you filtered through the population and found out that wasn't somebody that's going to work for you. That's a positive. Now you check that box off on that client and now you can go find another client who wants to do business with you. Go do, build your business on the people that want to do business with you. Right until you've built your database up to the point that you're making, you're, you're closing the, the amount of properties you want to close. You got to get out of your own head. None of this is an issue. I could say, I could say, uh, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't do social media. I don't do social media for real estate. I could sit here and say, well, nobody wants to do business with me because I don't do social media for real estate. You know what I mean? Um, I could think of a lot of things. I can't think of it right now, but I could think of a lot of things because I, I try not to think. Of, I'm always thinking about what's the advantages in every situation. So I'm so far this way, it's hard for me to even get my mind to go there, right? But there's plenty of negatives about me, right? I'm not organized. I, you know, I have too much going on. Um, so there's a lot of negatives, right? I can see here and I can see here and pick those out of the bunch and say, oh, nobody wants to do business with me. I'm too busy. I'm you know, I don't do social media and all that stuff. Or I could say, I work hard. I'll do everything I can do to help you. If you don't want to do business with me, fine. I'm going to go find somebody who does. You know what I mean? That's the attitude you need. Okay, one more thing. I'm sorry, I take a lot from your time. So, you, yesterday or two days ago, I received two calls that people want to purchase a property with me. Yeah. Okay, great. I, uh, okay, what is the impulse? I took all the information I needed. And okay, great. Second day, I texted them. Nobody responded. You what? Second day, I texted okay, them. Okay. Nobody responded. The day after, I tried to call. Nobody responded. Then after that, 
they respond, you know what, sorry, we have circumstances, I, both of them. And then I ask myself, what did they do in order they just cancel the, you know what I'm saying? So do you think when you over follow up with them, this is going to absolutely, be absolutely, absolutely. You don't want no? you don't want to over follow up. Okay. If somebody ghosts me or isn't responding, then I'm not going to try to reach out to them. I'll try twice. I'll call, no answer, no call back. The next day I might text. If I don't get a response back, I'm, I'm not going to reach out to them anymore. They'll have to reach out to me if they if they want to do something. I got to move on to people who respond and communicate with me. How am I going to do business with a ghost? That's a waste of my time. If they come back to me, great. Maybe I'll try like a week later, give them like a week, and I'll call them and say, hey, what happened last week? You know, whatever, if they do answer. But I'm not going to sit around, dude, I'm, I'm going. I'm going this way. I can't go back. I got to go this way. More people. There's, dude, there's millions of people here that need your help. You know, like you, you got to go. You got people to talk to, people to help. Thanks, man. <laughs> Can I take a picture? Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Good. Thank good to you. see you, bro. Be good, man. Thank you. Yes, sir. Oops. Yeah. I know. There you go. Yeah. You did a great job. I met these guys. I don't know how to talk. You guys are fabulous. Here, keep it up. We got three more. <laughs>